Well, if you're looking for a terrific Big 12 football game this weekend, you're not going to find it in Norman, Oklahoma. I know you needed me to tell you that, right? Homecoming is Saturday night for the Oklahoma Sooners. They still have not lost a conference game uh, since October of last year when Texas beat them. That's 11 straight conference victories for the Crimson and the Cream. Should make it 12 in a row fairly easily. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff on FS1 from Norman Saturday night, and the game should be over by about 6.40 or 6.45, and that's really uh, being, I'm not going to say cautiously speaking, that's certainly speaking right there. This thing uh, should be well into the hands of the Sooners, although um, there are injuries to talk about, which we'll talk about a little bit later. First, I even contemplated doing a, a, a pregame of Oklahoma, Kansas. Number one, not for the reason you think. Um, if you listen to my post game of Oklahoma, Texas Tech, you know that my voice was struggling, um, kind of like it is right now. Um, probably allergies, just probably stuff in the air. Maybe the fact that I was yelling at the Oklahoma <laughs> defense quite a bit um, on Saturday night, as I'm sure a lot of you Sooner fans were, or it might be just because of the joy that I'm getting right now from the Cubs playing in the uh, World Series. I've been a big time Cubs fan uh, since the early 80s, so great to see uh, those guys make it to the World Series, you know, for the first time in in 71 seasons. If I had to do this show earlier in the week, there's no way I could have because my voice had just flown completely south. Uh, the other reason why I was contemplating um, not doing a uh, Oklahoma-Kansas pregame is for the reason you think, and that's because the Sooners are a 40-point favorite to beat Kansas. In fact, if the Sooners play the way we think they're going to play, you should see a lot of second and possible third stringers play quite a bit, and the starters getting some valuable rest. I mean, right now, that's what the Sooners really need is rest, getting ready for this final three-game stretch in November. But you get two of those games at home, about Baylor, got to go to West Virginia, and, of course, you close out with Oklahoma State. But the next two games, opportunities for the Sooners uh, to get healed up, to limit playing time for their starters, and – in this case, some of the starters aren't even going to play because the injuries have just mounted up. Uh, don't expect to see either Matt on the defensive line for the Sooners, Matt Romar and Matt Diamond. Also, Charles Walker. I can't remember the last time he played the concussion issue. Still enough to keep him out for the Jayhawk game, it would appear. Um, Obo, the linebacker, doesn't look like he's going to play either. And then at corner, you've got uh, Jordan Parker. Um, a recent starter for the Sooners, opposite of Jordan Thomas, Will Parker. He is questionable uh, for this week, as is um, cornerback uh, Parrish Cobb. Um, if this were a game against a top 25 team um, like a Baylor or West Virginia or a top 25 type like Oklahoma State, uh, not having those guys would really be a cause for concern. And not to say that the Sooners are going to be able to shut Kansas out, because I do think the Jayhawks, because of their style, you know, they run the air raid attack as well, um, will be able to rack up some notable yardage and probably get a couple of touchdowns in this game. Um, the injury situation and the way the center defense has been playing um, give me reason to think that the Jayhawks could probably get 17, maybe 21 points in this game. Both teams, by the way, are coming into this game giving up about 37 points per contest, and both throw the ball a lot. But that's really where the similarities end. Bottom line is that Kansas can't run the ball very effectively. They can't stop the run. Uh, it was a close game with Oklahoma State last week, but the Cowboys, primarily relying on the ground attack, were able to pull away in the second half and took a four-point lead into a 24-point win over Kansas. Good half for the Jayhawks, but the second half was a whole other story. Um, you know, speaking of last week against Oklahoma State, you know, Montel Cozart did play well. Um, in fact, it was his best game of the year. You know, completed 24-40, threw for over 250 yards. So he's got a little bit of uh, momentum as far as how he played last week entering this game. Looks like he'll once again uh, get the start um, for KU on Saturday. Um, but this is where the similarities end and the differences begin. The Sooners are going to be able to run the ball at will, even with no Samaj P. Ryan. They'll keep him out, looks like, this week and next week. Mixon should have a pretty big game, as should Abdul Adams as well. So expect those guys to really carry the centers, and that should, again, make life easier for Baker Mayfield and company. They should have an absolute monster day on offense. In fact, if the game goes away, we think it's going to go come second half, um, maybe middle third quarter, you'll start seeing those reserves play for the Crimson and Cream and maybe some third stringers. Get the starters out as soon as possible. Build yourself a good enough lead 
to where, again, you can get those starters some rest. And remember, the Sooners next week will only have a, um, a few days to prepare uh, for the game in Ames, Iowa, against Iowa State, because that Iowa State game is going to be on a Thursday for national TV purposes on uh, November 3rd. So a pretty short practice week. And therefore, if you can put this game away with plenty of time to spare, um, you don't have to uh, worry about those starters getting a four-quarter effort. You can save them um, for later on and get some of those reserves quality playing time. Um, Jayhawks, again, are very vulnerable against the uh, run, and they don't run the ball particularly well themselves. Uh, Jayhawks are only averaging about 20 points of offense per game. Um, so, again, this is not going to be <clears throat> one of those games in which I, th I don't think you have to worry about the upset bug, even um, – you know, even though the Sooners have had injuries, bottom line is the Sooners are trying to get better, you know, defensively, uh, not just with coverages, but just with flat-out tackling, uh, flat-out effort, and just getting mean and having that physical presence that they once had. Um, and that's one thing that Mike Stoops' defense has been getting hammered for lately, especially last week, giving up over 800 yards of uh, total offense against Texas Tech. Tech's offense is good but they shouldn't be that good against you, and Sears almost lost the game because of how their defense looked in that particular contest. Um, again, those are Maje P. Ryan coming up, but again, that should give Mixon and Abdul Adams plenty of um, opportunities in this game, and I do think the Sooners um, should find um, an early lead because of the running attack, and I think the passing attack after that takes over. Final thoughts on this game. Uh, look, you know, Kansas, I'm not saying they're not as good as they were last year. In fact, they're better, but only slightly better. I mean, they're only one this year. I mean, come on. Can't get an FCS squad, a bad FCS team in Rhode Island. So I don't expect uh, the Jayhawks at all come fourth quarter to create drama in this game, unlike what Texas Tech was able to do, and that is create drama uh, uh, throughout and really making Oklahoma earn it. Sooners should be able to coast in this ball game. Um, don't be surprised, though, if Oklahoma does not cover the spread. Again, there are enough injuries on that defensive side to where I do think Kansas could probably hold the ball a little bit longer and maybe shorten the game a little bit. Um, so I look for the I look for it to be 55-17. Look for the Sooners to get at least half a hundred, and then um, they should have a pretty nice game in Ames, Iowa, um, against Iowa State. But the big thing for the Sooners is. Get those reserves in. Come out with um, with no major injuries because right now the Sooners defensively are a banged up squad, and you gotta get P Ryan rested up because I do think you'll see him in a couple of weeks when the Sooners' next tough opponent will be against Baylor, and that's uh, coming up, believe it or not, on uh, November the twelfth. Had the calendar cheat that for you, but Sooners should win. But I don't think they cover. I think they win by thirty eight points. Again, the Sooners are um, expected to win by at least forty. Um, expect Kansas uh, to offensively do some things early, but it won't be enough, and it won't happen that often. So Sooners should coast, and we'll get ready uh, for another Sooner win, which will be their 12th consecutive in conference play and their 12th consecutive against Kansas. Yeah, you got to go back to the 90s, the last time any Sooner team lost to Kansas. Not going to happen this week either. Boomer Sooner.